In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cute little Valentine's themed puppy using an iPad and Procreate. Plus I'm giving away Valentine's themed Procreate brush packs, 10 brushes and all. You can find out how you can download those by watching the video. And last but not least, I know there's a lot going on in this video, but I'm gonna feature some of my favorite submissions from my Shape Challenge video from last month. So if you wanna check those out, learn how to draw this guy and learn how you can get those free Procreate brushes, keep watching. All right guys, so let's go ahead and draw a cute little puppy for Valentine's Day. Starting out, I'm gonna use a 4,000 by 4,000, 300 DPI canvas. For my brush, I'm gonna start out using my HB pencil. That's part of my pencil pack that's available on Gumroad right now. And then also for my color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made. So you can download this color palette and follow along with the exact same colors that I'm using in today's video. If you just go to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page you'll find this plus if you haven't been on my website lately I've changed the way I'm doing it I do have the screenshot on there that you can save but I've also got the actual color palette file on there there's a video on the page too to help you learn how to install it and use it so check it out download it and follow along so let's get started so to begin I'm just gonna start out with a basic circle or oval here for the shape of this puppy's head. And then I'm gonna start out down here with another oval here. This is gonna be the bottom part of the chin here. And then where these curve out like this, I'm just gonna kinda connect these here. So you can see it kinda pulls out and then back in and then out here at the bottom. So that's going to be the shape of the head. I can even draw a line deer down here at the center. So we've got everything centered there. From here then, I think I want to get the nose in here so I can get that kind of blocked in. Another oval here and we'll kind of drag that down into a triangle down there at the bottom. So there we go. We've got that. Next up, let's go ahead and get the heart in here. So... I just draw a heart right here. Trying to get it as centered as I can. Once again, with the sketching stage on this, I keep everything really kind of loose and then go back in during the inking stage to clean everything up. So you'll see everything is, is kind of loose and really, really sketchy right now. So there we go. Let's go ahead and let's see. How do I want to do this? Maybe have his arms come up kind of holding the heart like this. So you can kind of curve the paws around. So just kind of a sweeping motion there from the bottom of the jaw there up and around. Kind of have the lines for the paws right there. I think that looks pretty good. Draw the rest of the body kind of coming down there. Then maybe give him a different color belly here coming down. Kind of get that in there and let's see maybe having a tail come up here from the back that kind of hanging out there at the side maybe have the tip colored a little bit different there so there's that let's go ahead and work on the rest of the head now so get the ears in here have these floppy ears hanging down like this and then maybe have kind of a tuft of hair here at the top coming down like that Let's see get his eyes in here I think actually let's let's make him kind of squinting here I think that'll look a little bit better he's in love and he's got this really happy squint to him Let me do that Pull his snout around here, have that to be a different color there, kind of matching that belly down there. And a super big, happy grin here. Maybe give him a spot here over his eye, and then get some eyebrows in there too. Just like that. 
All right, so there we go. We've got our sketch done. It's really loose. So next up, we're going to go ahead and start to do the inking. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and go up to my layers menu here. I'm going to make a new layer. This is going to be for our inks. And then for this, I'm going to go ahead and drop the opacity of layer one, which is our sketch layer down, just so it's not as dark, it's a little bit lighter. We can draw on top of it a little bit easier. Then going back to my brushes for my inking, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my cartooning set and I'm going to use standard anchor streamline to do the inking on this. Then going back up to my color palette here, this is the first time I'm going to switch colors. I've just got this dark brown in here. Let's go ahead and use that for the inking in the outline. So now I want to decide where's my light source coming from, just because I've talked about in previous videos, the importance of line weights and how I use those in my artwork and deciding where the light source comes from helps you determine where the lines are going to be thicker at. So if we have the light source coming in from this top right, anything closer to this light source is going to have a thinner line. Anything further away back here is going to have a thicker line. So now that we've got that kind of laid out, we can go ahead and start our inks. So I'm going to go ahead and start light here. It's going to be lighter up here because of the light source and it's going to get heavier as it comes back down here into the back. So we'll see here, I'm going to bring it around and get heavier there into the back. Watch that one more time as I go down and around and get heavier there towards the back. This towards the front is going to be heavier down here because of the shadow, but then it's going to get lighter as it comes back up and around. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and let me switch my brush here to the standard anchor eraser. Kind of erase those overlaps there. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so I can get these lined up. Get those pieces of the tough there. Go ahead and get this ear next. Once again, a little bit heavier line back here because it is further away from that light source. This ear here, this one's going to be lighter here towards the front, a little bit heavier there at the bottom. I'm going to try to match those up a little bit better from left to right as far as the, the size goes. So there we go. Fix this one as it comes down and meets there a little bit. And a little bit smoother there. All right, next up, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the heart here. So I'm going to erase here. Ready for that. There and down. Back up and around here. Zooming in here to match up those lines. Then using my eraser, I'm just going to kind of get a little bit better of a taper there and then erase these overlaps over here. All right, there we go. Erase these overlaps where the paw is going to go. I'm going to go back to my brush now and bring these up and around. These little lines here in the center of the paw, I'm going to taper those. Bring that up and around. I'm going to have these tapered down as those come in. So there we go. Let's get the body here. Belly there, a little bit different. Tail back here once again, thicker back here just because of where the light source is coming in from. And on this inside line here, you'll see I use a thinner line here. Anything that goes on the inside, I usually try to keep a thinner line just to have the outside outlines reserved, uh, the heavier parts reserved for the outlines. So there we go. Go ahead and get the nose here next. So bring around a curve line here and connect it down here. Let's we'll go ahead and fill that in completely. And then using my eraser, I'm just gonna erase a just kind of reflection there across just a tapered line. 
And the key to getting those tapers is really pressing down harder to begin with and then letting up pressure as you go with the line. It takes some getting used to, so practice is key with that. Still using the standard anchor streamline here. Let's go ahead and let's do the part of the mouth here. It's going to be the different colors. We'll bring around those lines. Once again, you'll see that I used lighter lines in there. Mouth here, that kind of goofy grin to them. Bottom of the lip there. And let's go ahead and do the eyes next. So let's get a taper line here. It's going to get thicker as it comes down towards the center. Like that. Get that one a little bit nicer there. There we go. And then I'm going to switch to the non-streamlined version of this. I'm just going to go to the standard anchor to get these other lines. These little quick tapered lines, I like using the non-streamlined version for those. Just gives you a little bit more control over that taper as it comes out. So there's that. And then let's go ahead and just give them a little a couple laugh lines over here. Where those eyes kind of crease in there. There we go. And then going back to my standard anchor streamline here. Just going to go ahead and pull the spot around his eye there. And get that a little bit thinner. I don't want it too thick. I don't want it coming too close to that line there. So that looks good. Now for the eyebrows here, I always go with a thicker line down underneath. And then a thinner line there at the top just kind of gives that weight to the bottom and shows kind of like where that shadow is going to come in there. So there we go. Last thing I want to do then is going back to just the regular standard anchor. I'm just going to go in and just add a couple of little fur lines here. Just kind of randomly, doesn't have to be in this exact position, wherever you see fit to throw them in there. Do that, and then maybe a couple just like random little hairs here popping out. You'll see this one, I kind of overlap there a little bit too much, so I can just turn that into a hair. And fix it like that. And you'll see with some of these, I'm going to the edge of the line and coming out. And then other ones, I'm going actually inside of the design and coming out just so they don't look exactly the same. They're all placed a little bit different. Let me give them just a kind of crease here across coming out. All right. So there we go. We've got the inks done. Now it's time to move on to adding the colors. So to do this and add the colors, we're going to come up here to our layers menu. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the sketch layer now that we're done with that. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to hold down and drag this underneath my layer two, which is the inks. And then on the inks layer, I'm going to come up here tap on this once and I'm going to set this to reference. So this is going to allow us to drag and drop all of our colors on layer three without affecting our lines layer. This is going to help us layer later when we go in to add the shadows and the highlights. So now that we're on this layer, I'm going to come back up to my color picker here and the first color here, let's use that for the main body. So we'll throw that in there, the arms, sides here and then the tail. Now that we've got that coming back up, we've got a lighter color here. We'll use that for that part of the mouth and then the belly there. And then back up one more time. We've got a darker brown here, which we'll use for the ears. And then also that spot over his eye. And then this kind of brownish orange color here. We'll use that for the eyebrows. So that kind of stands out there. And then finally, we've got the pink color for the heart. 
And then last but not least, let's go ahead and switch back that lighter brown here, which you can also color pick just by holding down your finger. We'll use that for the edge of the tail there. And then probably across the nose there. All right, so there we go. We are good. We are done with the color flats. Using that reference layer, you can see it's super quick just to fill this in. Color flats take no time at all, which leads us into the next part of today's tutorial, which is going to be adding the shadows. So once again, to add the shadows, we've decided our light source is coming in this way. So our shadows are going to fall here on this left hand side. Now that we've got that decided, we can go ahead and make our shadow layer. So coming back up to our layers menu, hit the plus button for a new layer. And we're going to set this one to clipping mask. So if we tap on this and then hit clipping mask, when we draw on this layer, it's only going to show up on the, the parts that are colored in on layer three, which really helps you stay in the lines and have more control over your shadows. So coming back up to our color palette now, I'm going to go down to the second row and pick this color here. And that's kind of this reddish brown color. That's going to be what we use for our shadows. Now that we've got that, I'm going to start kind of dragging and dropping in some colors here. If it will work here. There we go. So I'm going to fill in just a pretty decent amount here. I'm going to go ahead now, zoom in just a tad bit so we can see a little bit better here. And I'm going to switch over to my standard anchor streamline. And I'm just going to pull in some shadows down here. Just like this. Bring these down and around underneath, whoops, underneath the nose here. that chin, the lip there, I guess. Let's back up and around here. We're going to get this all connected so we can just kind of drag and drop this color in around the eyebrow here and then back up. And that should connect everything if we did it correctly. But we've got to go ahead and come up here and we've got to turn off reference on the lines layer. Because if we dragged and dropped it in now, it would just fill in the whole face. So if we tap on this, turn off reference, go back down to our layer four again, and drop this in. That should fill that in pretty nicely there. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and just add a few more shadows here before I adjust the opacity. Bring these down. like to get a decent amount filled in just so once I start to adjust the opacity I can see what it looks like on all the different colors and it helps me pick the opacity level a little bit easier all right so there we go now we're gonna come back up to our layers and hitting this end right here for blend mode we'll bring up our opacity slider we're gonna start to drop this down and I think probably Right there about 25% is pretty good for the opacity. So now that we've got that, we can go ahead and kind of add in a few more shadows here and there. Once again, light source is coming from here. So I'll probably make this a little bit bigger there. Bring this one down a little bit more. Throw in one here around the back of the heart. That looks pretty good. And then probably pull one down here underneath the ear, the bottom. Use my eraser to kind of fix that back up a little bit. There we go. Then I'm also going to add in a shadow here underneath this eyebrow. This just kind of helps to bring out the, the eyes a little bit. Gives them a little bit more of a weight to them and a little bit more of a, a three-dimensional quality, even though it's a two-dimensional piece. There we go. All right, now I'm going to go back in with my eraser and do some erasing on some of these shadows. 
So like I've said before, I don't want to have these two filled in like back here. This whole thing is one giant shadow. And since there's no non-shadow parts back here, you can't really tell that it's shadowed because you don't have anything to compare it to right there. So just by erasing there is going to allow us to do that. So if I come up here and erase this here, it's a little bit back here. That's going to show a little bit more of a shadow there. I'm going to come back in with my brush and just kind of do some tapered lines here. To add in some details there on the eyebrows. Go clean these up a little bit. All right, pull out one more time here and just kind of get a quick view and see what we're left with. I think that looks pretty good. So that's going to be our shadows. So from here then, we can go ahead and start to work on our highlights. So the highlights going to work a lot like the process for the shadows. We're going to go ahead and make a new layer once again, tapping on this and setting it as clipping mask. And then coming back up to my color palette here, I'm going to go to this yellow. That's what we're going to use for the highlights on this one. Like I said, light source coming in from up here. Just going to go around and add in some highlights where that light source would be hitting. So this top right hand corner here. Same thing here, pulling this down and around. You'll see I've got that kind of tapered off as it comes into there. Go ahead and pull some in here from the front. Around here. And you can see as I'm doing this, I'm basically following the, the flow of these lines that I have on the inks. So a lot of people wonder, you know, how to know how to shape the, uh, the highlights and then where to put them. Of course, we talked about where to put them because where the light source is coming in. But then also the shape of them is going to kind of follow the inks that you've already laid down previously in that first stage since you decided where the light source was coming from. So there's that. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to do kind of like a big oval highlight here. Drag and drop that in. Maybe a smaller one down here. Like that. And then I might even pull one here at the top of the this eyebrow. couple of tapered ones here like that and top of the heart here pull this around kind of tapering it the way that this line here flows and you'll see I've got a couple of lines messed up there that are just kind of floating out there that I didn't intend to show up there so fix those and then go back up to my highlights Let me do a uh, oval one here that a tapered line here And I think that looks pretty good. I don't go as crazy with my highlights as I do with my shadows. I go a little bit heavier with the shadows. So you'll see there's not as many of those highlights in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop the opacity. So coming back up here to my layers, N for blend mode, dropping this down. Let's go maybe, let's see. 35 maybe don't want it too bright. I think that looks pretty good 35 36 So there we go. So that's gonna be our basic character design So let's go ahead and add a background to this guy now. So I'm gonna come up here to my Layers menu once again, I'm gonna come back down to the bottom here and I'm gonna make a new layer And I didn't add a background color in here So I'm gonna show you what I usually do for my background colors here. I'm gonna hold down on the main body color. And then in Procreate, if you go to Harmony, it's gonna pull up the Harmony Color Picker here. 
I've got complementary chosen here. You've got a few different options, but let's use complementary. And I'm going to pick this blue here. That's going to be the complementary color. So it's going to make that stand out even more. So that's what we're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and add that blue down here then. So it's there if you guys do download the color palette. And with that, then we're on this new layer six down here. And with my standard anchor streamline, I'm just kind of kind of make a crazy looking rectangle shape there for the background. And that looks pretty good. And then from here, kind of want to add something else. So I thought about this ahead of time and it's Valentine's. So I do have a new brush pack that once again, because it's the holiday, it's a free brush pack that you guys can download. It's full of Valentine's shapes of hearts. So coming up here to my eraser menu, I'm going to come over to my Valentine's pack. So you can download this, like I said, for free. It's my gift to you for Valentine's Day. If you just hop over to Gumroad, which I'll link this down in the description below, we got 10 different hearts here. So you can use these as regular brushes to make and add colors or what I'm going to do is you can use them as erasers. So using this eraser for this heart, you're going to see, I'm just going to come in here, erase a little bit of the background there, come down here to one of these other ones. Let's just skip around, throw one in here. I'll change the size around for these. So there's one. Let's go ahead and this bunch of hearts here. Throw those in here. Just getting the right size here. There we go. So we got some hearts there. Use this heart here. Throw that in there. So feel free to download these. Play around with them. You can use them in your just regular personal projects. Or if you do commercial projects, you can use them in there too. I do not mind. Just don't package them and resell them since I'm giving away for free. If you want to use them in your artwork that you sell, go ahead. I don't care. It's all good. So there's that. A couple more here. Of course, we can flip the screen around and have some kind of upside down. These are going to change based on where the screen's at and the angle of the screen. So just moving stuff around like that will allow you to have total control over what shows up. Another one down there at the bottom. There we go. So there we go. A couple of hearts thrown in there for good measure too. Hop on Gumroad, grab those for free. And then last but not least, I want to go ahead and sign this guy. So come back up here to my standard anchor and sign away. 21. So there we go. A cute little puppy for Valentine's Day. So that's it for today's drawing tutorial. Up next, let's take a look at some of my favorite submissions from last month's shape challenge. So last month, I started a new shape challenge with the shape you see here. The idea was to make a design based around that shape. You could twist the shape, you could turn the shape, just had to make sure your design stayed inside the shape and filled the entire thing up. So without further ado, here are some of my favorite submissions from last month's shape challenge. First up, we've got Hey Boaz, and of course, we've got the Predator here, and this is a perfect example when a design fits a shape to a T. It looks like the shape was made for it, but I can guarantee you when I first drew up the shape, I didn't necessarily see the Predator. Even when I was working on my design based on the shape, I didn't see the Predator, but now that this is in front of me, that's all I can see. So just a real testament to how well the design was thought out to fit into the shape. Uh, the way that kind of tail part comes down in the back, the dreadlocks just fill that perfectly. And then the way the shape comes down and bows out, gets wider in the front and expands, it's just perfect for that big predator mouse. So just a fantastic job. Hey, Boaz. And speaking of which, I'm going to be throwing up the social media handles of everyone featured in the video. So whether it be Instagram or Facebook or even websites, keep your eyes peeled to the screen and check these people out. Show them some love. Next up, we've got Stephen Moore Art, and we've got this kind of robot, alien, astronaut, and I really love this, the way Stephen 
used the outlines of the shape and then continued those lines into the body of the design. We've got that kind of bowling pin antenna there in the foreground. That one's the bigger one closer to the viewer and the way that outside line comes down into the head, which allows that top part of the head to wrap back around. And then you've got the perspective of the smaller antenna there in the distance and it's shadowed. Just a really cool use of perspective there. Same thing goes for the front of the face, the way that helmet wraps around the chin. You can kind of see inside and then also through the helmet. Just cool, cool idea. Same thing goes with the face too. Just a really nice use of lines there in the face and building up that character color wise just pops off the page and just really cool to see. So great job, Stephen Moore. Next up, we've got Angel Quintero from the Keep Creating group over on Facebook. If you guys aren't part of the group yet, definitely hop over there and check it out. I'll talk more about that here in a second. But this one, we've got a really cool shark. Love the character design of this, the expression, and just the face. Just super well done. Love the little details, too. The little hook coming out of the mouth, a little seaweed coming up from the bottom. Just a couple of nice touches there. Plus, once again, colors with this one just make it pop. Love the use of the blues. Then the way that the shadows and highlights are done, really, really nice. Really reminds me of kind of one of those surf shop style t-shirts that you would see. So just really pops off the page and has a really nice professional look to it. So fantastic job, Angel. Next up, we've got Micah Claycamp, and Micah also a part of the Keep Creating group over on Facebook, and uh, Micah's niche is doing cars and trucks and vehicles, so it was kind of nice to see his wheelhouse on this one kind of fitting into the shape, so very, very cool seeing this car or truck crammed into the shape. Love kind of the, the highlights and the shine off that metal, just really well done and seeing everything kind of fit nicely into that shape. Super cool. Check Micah out at micadoodles.com. Very, very awesome work. Next up, we've got Chuppy Lim, and Chuppy's been a part of the Keep Creating group for a while. Back when I was doing regular weekly uh, art challenges on my YouTube channel, Chuppy did quite a few submissions for that, and just always a really, really cool use of vibrant uh, colors that just pop off the page again just really draws your eye in has a lot of energy to them and once again this is no different here just a really really strong piece it's a lot of fun it's it's bright it's vibrant and it's really really cool so fantastic job there chuppy uh, next up, we've got Terry Mead with none other than Davy Crockett. And this one made me laugh just because, of course, the coonskin cap could have just been the hat. But Terry went the extra step and just made it an actual live raccoon sitting there on top of Davy's head. So kind of got two characters mashed up into one. I thought that was really cool. And then that expression that Davy has just shows, yeah, not really feeling it. Uh, not very excited about the whole thing. Kind of has that annoyance look. So this one, like I said, made me laugh. Really like the execution of this and Super, super cool use of multiple characters in one design. So great job, Terry. Uh, next up, we've got Darren Randall Art with this Dancing Lava Dude. And this one, just a lot of fun. I love the colors in this one, the way that the uh, yellows kind of fade into the orange, too. thought that was a nice touch. Also, just the little splatter textures all over the, the darker oranges and the kind of whites that go over top of the body. I think that's cool. And then also just the pose itself. A lot of energy in this one, a lot of motion. You can kind of feel that dancing vibe. And then to kind of finish it off, that face, that expression, it just kind of ties everything in to a really fun design. So really good job there, Darren Randall Art. Uh, next up, we have, and I don't know pronunciation-wise of this one, so I will spell it. We've got X-I-A-N-P-R from Instagram. So here we have an underwater sea scene. Try saying that 10 times fast. Uh, but instead of going with a character design here, we've almost got just an aquatic landscape to look at. We've got the uh, seabed there at the bottom with the sand, the aquatic life down there kind of hanging out. So there's a bunch of different things going on. A lot to draw your eye in and look at. Takes a while to digest it. We've got all the plant life in the background with a good mix of colors too that brings a lot of life to the design so just a fantastic job there 
Next up, uh, William Dale Youngblood from Keep Creating. And we've got this really majestic eagle here. Once again, kind of a lot of motion in this. You can kind of see the eagle flying. And then the one thing here that kind of stood out too that I liked, kind of gives motion to the design too, is the really lighter line weights throughout the, the eagle, those kind of line textures that wrap around, uh, just adds a lot more detail into there. And then also, like I said, gives it a little bit more motion too, but just a really strong piece from William. So thanks so much for sharing that one. And then finally, we've got cool yellow hands from Instagram with this really cool rooster. And I love this one. Just the perspective is fantastic. Having that beak super big there and kind of foreshortening down back to the face. Love the character design on this, the face, the eyes, just really well done. And that perspective is just kind of out there and pushing the boundaries. One of the things I love the most about cartooning. So really, really great job. Cool yellow hands. So that's it for the submissions for the shape challenge. Just want to thank everyone that participated. There were a ton of entries into this on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So thanks so much for taking a stab at it and throwing your work out there. Love to see what everybody did. Uh, if you guys haven't joined that group yet over on Facebook, it's called keep creating a group for artists by artists. Uh, it's a place where you can share any of your work. If you do designs based on the tutorials here that I do on YouTube, you can share those or just anything art related that you're making. If you're doing it, we want to see it. So hop on over. I'll link it in the description below place where you can share your work, give feedback, get feedback, meet new people. It's an awesome place to be and want you guys to be a part of it as well. So if you like today's video too, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications. So you can get alerted when I post new videos. As for me, I can be found online at bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.